I can't see anything, the sun is in my eyes, it is so low, but it's nice to see the sun out, the roads are wet, it's bloody cold, but what can you do, eh? I'm out on a bike, that's the main thing, and this video is all about this little beauty here, I say little, it's me Africa twin, the CRF 1000L. It's a 4,000 mile update. I'm going to tell you some things I like, dislike about this bike. See if they've changed over the years. Have a little walk around and show you some of the stuff I've done to the bike. So stick around for this one. Thank you for sticking around for this one. So I've had this for nearly two years. It'll be two years in March. It's now January. And I've done just over 4,000 miles. So this is technically the 4,387 mile update. I know that's not a great deal for a bike like this, but circumstances have meant I haven't ridden it as much as I wanted to. But it's all good, it's all good. I did do two videos, one called Five Things I Love About My Africa Twin and another one called Five Things I Hate About My Africa Twin. I shall drop the link to those videos below so you can go and check those out to see if anything's changed. I can remember some of the things I said, but I can't remember all of them. So maybe some of them have changed, some of them haven't. Basically, I'm too lazy to go back and look at my own videos before making this one. Anyway, let's crack on with this one. My Africa Twin, a 2017 in the red, black, white. The fastest color. Other owners would disagree, but I'm basing this on fact. This is definitely the fastest color. What we're gonna do, is we're going to head up to Box Hill where I do my first impression review walk rounds and we're going to do a walk around with this and I'm going to show you some of the things I've uh, done to it some of the improvements some of you might think they're not improvements but I think they're all improvements because it's my bike and I love it and then we're going to go from there we're going to ride these country lanes up there so I'm going to talk a little bit about the bike the handling the ergonomics how I get on with it now before we get right into the crux of this video I'm going to tell you the usual that I do for my uh, reviews and this is so you can get an idea of where I'm coming from on this bike. I'm six foot two, I'm 17 stone, long in the leg, wide in the shoulders. There you go. And that's basically so you know how I get on with the ergonomics. Oh, these roads are glorious. It's an absolutely beautiful day. The roads are slippery as f because it's been raining all night. It's very cold, what are we, four degrees? No, it's subtropical. It was two degrees the other day. So now we're up to four. We've doubled the temperature. Right now, I bought this bike as a road bike. I didn't buy this as an off-road bike. There are plenty of reviews, updates, and things like that out there for this bike on the dirt. And it is bloody good on the dirt, so I've heard. I've ridden it once on the dirt. I shit my pants because I've got standard tires and I don't have much skill. But it's all good. Anyway, I've set this up for the road. When I first bought it, it was a little bit snatchy because it's a parallel twin and it's a big thousand cc lump. So it's gonna be a little bit snatchy. And I found it was rocking backwards and forwards. So what I did was stiffen up the suspension front and rear to keep it more level on the road. It's probably too stiff for the dirt, but on the road, it's pretty good. Although it is still a tiny bit snatchy, it's not emphasized by the rocking motion of the suspension. Yeah, so handling wise now, it's pretty good on the road. I like it. The wheels are still a little bit slippery. I've got the original tires on there. They're good in the dry, not so great in the wet, but not bad. They're not scary. Once you get used to them and once you get used to where they slide and where they kick in and out, they're pretty good. I quite like them, to be honest. A lot of people hate them, but I don't. I get on with them. Yes, yeah, so I'll get on with the tyres. As I said, they're still the original ones. Uh, they're due for a change probably in the next 2,000 miles. The back one is not wearing too badly, but I just fancy a change of tyres. So I don't know what I'm going to go with. I don't know if I'm going to go 50-50 dual sports and then try a little bit of off-roading or I'm going to go back with road-based tyres, get something a little bit stickier than what I've got on now. And while we're talking about the wheels, one of the things that originally bugged me about this bike was the fact that it runs tubes and it made me paranoid. So I was uh, carrying puncture repair kits, tools, tire levers everywhere I went with me. And I probably should still be doing that because I haven't had any punctures and they haven't let me down and uh, I haven't been stranded by the side of the road. It hasn't bothered me that much. Plus I've got RAC cover, so it's not all bad. As long as I'm riding around this country and pretty close to home, I'm not that fussed about it. So I've kind of got over that paranoia. They don't bother me so much anymore. And plus you can change them. You can get new wheels for this. It's about 2000 pounds for a decent set, but you can get rims that run tubeless tires. So it's not the end of the world and there are options out there now. 
obviously if I'm going on a longer trip I still take all the tire levers and the tools and things like that so I can change a inner tube on the road but for just cruising as I said it ain't too bad I'm not fussed anymore my right, ergonomics as in handlebars to peg to seat ratio for me is nearly spot on it really is good for me now as I said I'm quite long in the leg so this type of bike suits me down to the ground and this one is brilliant that's one of the reasons I bought it I sat on it and I felt right at home right away the seat could do with coming up maybe an inch because I rode the Africa Twin Sport, the Adventure Sport, which is a new one, which has a higher seat on it, and I found that position a bit more spot on for me. But it's not the end of the world. What's an inch between friends, eh? The seat, after about an hour, I get a bit numb on the backside, but it lasts about half an hour, an hour, of fidgeting around, and then I kind of uh, go through the walls, so to speak, and then on the other side, it's quite comfortable. It's a weird thing. It's not the most comfortable seat in the world, it's not the most uncomfortable seat in the world, but it does this weird thing at about an hour when my backside starts to go numb. And then after an hour after that, I don't know whether I just get used to it or I've lost all sensation, but it's not too bad after that. I would like to replace the seat. As I said, I'd like to get it about an inch higher and replace it with an all-in-one. But they're about 300 quid. And is it worth 300 quid just for a little bit of adjustment? Uh, I don't know. It's not too bad in the winter. It's much better in the winter because I've got these padded trousers on, these winter trousers. So they uh, give you a little bit more around the boutte section and make it a lot more comfortable. And as I said at the beginning, I bought this bike and I mainly ride it on the roads. So there's a lot of traffic work living. I mean, this is the outskirts of London now, but I do go into London every now and again and ride it around where I live where there's a lot of traffic. And although being a little bit snatchy on the throttle, but we sorted that out with the suspension as I just said, it's not too bad, it's pretty good, it's quite thin. This bit here is wide, but once you get used to it and you know you can fit this through gaps, the back goes through easier, as long as you haven't got the panniers on the back because they're pretty wide. But as it's standard, it's not too bad for filtering to be honest, it's better than I thought it would be. And once you get a little bit of confidence with the size and you get used to it, it's quite easy. And these are the roads I mainly like to ride these little tight twisty country lanes so is this bike designed for this no probably not this is for open expanses and obviously off-road so I didn't exactly buy this bike for the riding I intended to do but I bought this bike because I love the look of it always wanted an Africa twin uh, and I believe there's a video out there of when I actually bought this bike that I did ages ago probably two years ago when I bought the bike but again I haven't gone back and looked at that so I don't know what that's about <laughs> my memory's gone I'm old you know but yeah as a road bike I have grown to love this thing it is fantastic on the road don't let anyone tell you it's not maybe it's something to do with my weight on the bike it suits it but it handles okay it's fast enough for me I mean it's not the most powerful one out there it's about 100 brake horsepower and people do this thing where they compare it to the wrong bikes forever since I've had this bike people have been comparing it to the GS 1200 to the Triumph Tiger 1200 and the big KTM's the big adventure bikes, stuff like that and I don't understand that I have to keep correcting people this is not designed to go up against the 1200 GS this is not designed to go up against the big Tigers this is designed to go up against the 800 Tiger the 800 GS and if you get it in that context and put it around there the figures are pretty good now going back to the five things I hated or loved the ones I remember I remember one of them being cruise control and uh, that's still a massive bugbear of mine on this bike it's an adventure bike it's a touring bike and it should have cruise control there's a lot of people out there going oh cruise control why don't you wear a nappy why don't you wear a dress do you know what I don't give a shit about you guys. If you want to ride around with cramp in your arm, that's good for you. I did America this year, where I did like 2,000, 2,500 miles in nine days, and cruise control was brilliant. It just takes the pressure off your right hand. So on this bike, yeah, it should be done. The new Adventure Sport came out, and that still didn't have cruise control. And that was throttle by wire, so I don't understand it. I don't understand why Honda have not gone down the road of putting cruise control on this. One of the other bugbears of mine was the tank range, and that still is. I know some people are saying uh, you can get 200 miles out of this tank. I've never got 200 miles anywhere near it. I ran out of petrol at 180, and that was pushing it. And I only ran out of petrol because they were saying on the internet that 
when the last bar comes in you can get a certain amount of mileage out of it so I was pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and I ran out at 180 or about 182 miles so uh, I didn't get the mileage that I was supposed to I've never got anywhere near 200 miles and I would like to see 200 miles minimum on this bike maybe it's the way I ride maybe it's because I ride in town maybe it's because I've got the aftermarket exhaust there's all sorts of factors but I still would like to see 200 miles on this clock when the tank runs out I mean I'm averaging I'll let you know now because I'm going to switch it over to the average miles per litre I'm averaging 10.3 miles per litre since I bought the bike because I haven't reset this since I bought it I never reset that I leave it as it is from uh, when I got the bike so that was uh, 4,396 miles ago when that was reset and I'm averaging over that distance 10.3 miles per litre right we're going to take this last little country lane down to box hill where we're going to have a walk around and i can show you some of the things on the bike for those of you that have never seen one of these in a review because i don't even know where i've done a review on this i don't think i have i will do a walk around and show you some of the bits on it and i'll show you some of the stuff i've done to it but let's have a little bit of a play on this slippery country lane see and this is what i mean i can still have fun on this on the box standard road tyres on a country lane on tarmac now most people would take this off-road and say it's a great off-road bike but you don't see too many people blatting down country lanes on it treating it like a road bike but I love it I absolutely love it yeah it's not the fastest thing in the world but it is very very comfortable and I've got used to it now it's become almost said we've become one that's what's happened the Jedi powers have gelled and we have become one. Oh, I'm riding around on a day like this, even on slippery roads. This bike is absolutely beautiful. Now I know all bikes are subjective to people. Some people will like it, some people won't. But this is my opinion coming from uh, me on my bike. And how could you not love the sound of that exhaust? I mean, even at a slow speed like this, cruising, down a little country lane. It's cold, sun's out, the colours are wonderful, the road's damp. It's just a beautiful place to be, this Africa Twin. I can see why people ride them around the world, why they want to ride them around the world. Would I ride it around the world? I'm not too sure. If it was based mainly on tarmac and dusty roads, then yeah. But if it got anywhere near mud and slippery, I might uh, <laughs> bottle it a bit. I'd probably prefer my 250 there. I've got more confidence on my 250 off-road. But on roads like this, even if it got a little bit gravelly, potholey, yeah, I'll take this. This is a lovely place to be. Oh, doesn't she sound beautiful? I feel the back wheel sliding out ever so slightly not enough to kick the traction control in but you can feel it sliding and it feels good the traction control system on it is pretty good it's a three-stage system i tend to keep it on full over winter and then reduce it when the roads get drier and more in the summer but in winter on roads like this when it's slippery especially around town in traffic as well it's pretty good where people spill diesel and uh, all sorts of rubbish in the road it helps you out and I'm all for one helping me out as I get older because my reactions get slower right so here she is my Africa twin my CRF 1000 L all mine all mine let's crack on and I'll give you a little bit of a walk around of the bike right so let's start with the wheels uh, 21 inch 18 inch tires are Dunlop Trail Maxes, the standard ones it comes with. It's done over 4,000 miles on these tyres. They're still the original ones. I get on with them all right. They've still got a little bit of tread left. They're not too bad, not too squared off, and they're pretty good. I can't fault them. Yeah, they could be a little bit grippier, so I guess I could fault them then. Uh, but they're not too bad. They're okay. They're good for the road. Brakes, Nissan calipers front, rear, radio on the front, and uh, if you look behind there, we've got a decent set of upside down forks and uh, they're pretty robust they do the job as i said i've mucked around with the suspension it is adjustable on the front and on the rear the rear is nice and easy to adjust let me come around and show you that it's just this little dial here and i've got it wound up so it's pretty stiff on the front which is that and pretty stiff on the rear so it kind of balances it out it doesn't rock when you're coming on and off the throttle so much engine parallel twin pushing out i think it's just over 
100 brake horsepower just under around that i don't really care to be honest i ride a bike and if i like it that'll do me i'm not that fussed about power to be honest i get on a bike i ride it if i like it then i'm interested in it i'm not all about figures i don't need to talk top trumps in the cafe it doesn't bother me if i like a bike i'll buy it foot pegs okay these rubber bits come off they could be a little bit bigger but they're okay i haven't had any problems with them a lot of people get bigger ones if they're going off road so they can have the spikes a little bit bigger so they get more grip but on the road not too bad brakes in the right place gear shift on the other side's in the right place foot pegs are all in the right place uh, i haven't had a pillion on so i can't say from their point of view what it's like but i'm assuming it'll be all right because they get to put their arms around me and that's just a bonus seat is adjustable it comes up and down it's on its high setting at the moment I'm not sure of how high and low it goes, not a lot, as you can see there, it's only millimetres, but it might make a difference to somebody. All in all, I love this bike, I really do love this bike. Now, I want to show you some of the things I've done to it, I haven't done a lot to it, but I've done a few things to make it a little bit more comfortable for me, and uh, to make it sound better and stuff like that. First of all, this windscreen, the original windscreen, was not great for me. It caused a lot of buffeting around the head. It was actually better with no screen than with the original screen that came on. And I did have the tall one as well. It wasn't even the short one, it was the tall one. Maybe with the short one it would have been better. But the tall one caused a lot of buffeting. So I put this on, which is an MRA screen with this adjustable spoiler. And that's eliminated all the buffeting over the top of the crash helmet which is nice i can even ride with the visor up as long as it's not peeing down with rain i can ride with the visor up we've also fitted this tom tom uh, gps system which is a godsend i love this i love just putting the twisty roots in my tom tom and just going out and having a little bit of a play that's fun that's a good system that is it's really good also fitted heated grips i went for the oxford ones over the honda the honda ones are really really expensive and i've ridden a bike with honda heated grips and they're not as good as these these are about a quarter of the price and twice as good so these are worth an investment this little bit's pretty ugly but you've got to put up with these things i've also put on the hand guards they're just a plastic one they don't have the metal brace around there they're not bark busters they're more to deflect the wind than to do anything in safety they probably just break off but they do a good job of keeping the wind off my knuckles i've got the 12 volt charger here but that's not exciting is it on the back i've got my box that's been around for donkey's years and all my bikes that's a, a jivvy and that goes on the jivvy rack which sits under there i've also got the panniers the honda panniers that go on here obviously they're not on today but they're pretty good for everyday use i wouldn't take them if i was going around the world or on a trip where i think the bike's going to fall over because they're probably break they're not the most robust things but they're quite handy because when you take them off the bike looks like this there's no ugly frames or anything like that and that's why i went for them and i only use them occasionally also got this little honda tank bag there are plenty of tank bags out for this but i went for the honda one because of these little clips here and it just fits and it's just tidy it's only small but it does the job handy for going to and from work but the main sexiness of this bike is this this little beauty here the remus can it's only a can it's not a full system the actual downpipes are pretty good so i've just put a slip on on there and it is one of the best sounding bikes i've ever heard when i first rode an africa twin it had one of these on and it was a contributing factor for me buying the bikes now i know a lot of people don't like loud exhausts but around town in london i quite like them they act as a second safety feature as in you just sort of like blip the throttle and rev a little bit and uh, it just lets people know you're coming and it sounds bloody good anyway let's have a listen you probably need to put your headphones on for this bit i don't know how it's going to come out on this microphone because it's only the microphone in the chin bar the crash helmet but we'll see And there you go, Pure Six in a can. Right, so what else can I tell you about the bike that's happened over the years? I haven't done much to it. As I said, I've only done 4,000 miles, which is not the greatest distance, but I love the bike. I absolutely adore this bike. I love the look of it. I love the way it handles. I love the sound of it. It's just got a nice road presence. There are a few things that, yes, I'd rather have with it, like a, a bigger tank, but I rode the Adventure Sport, the new one, and I found the tank too wide, so your legs were like that. Whereas this is comfortable. I prefer this tank. I prefer this layout when I'm sitting on it to the one with the bigger tank. I've also seen online there's a 30 litre safari tank. It looks big ugly, 
but if you were to sort of like do distance and if that is a real issue then i could always go down that route it will spoil the looks of the bikes but if you're going for sort of like function and you need it for round the world trips then i'd go for function over the way a bike looks but all in all it's pretty good led front lights led indicators the lights are pretty good in the dark when you put the full beams on they give a nice spread of light right so let's get back on the bike and go for a little bit more of a ride i'm going to get a coffee now before i go for a ride so i'm going to go over there grab myself a coffee and then we're going to change the battery and then go for a ride down these little country lanes and uh, i'll let you listen to the treat that is this remus exhaust Right, so we're going to head down this country lane, so put the headphones in. Sit back, enjoy the sound of this wonderful exhaust, and I shall speak to you in a little while. I mean look at this countryside it's January it's a glorious day to be out before we get into more of the exhaust loveliness there has been a couple of recalls on this bike I had a recall for the wheels the spokes were going uh, dark they were furring up going a little bit black so owners were complaining about that me personally as you could see from that walk round I don't tend to clean my bikes that much so I didn't notice to be honest and when I took it into the shop Dobles, they pointed it out and said, do you want a new set of wheels? So I said, yeah, you know I want a set of those. So they hooked me up with a new set of wheels, courtesy of Honda and their recall. Uh, there's also a recall on it at the moment, which is for the centre stand. There's something failing on the centre stand, which makes the bike fall over. So I'm not really using the centre stand at the moment till that one's done. So that should be in in the next few weeks to get that sorted. And that's about it. That's all the recalls I've had for this bike. So not too bad. It's never let me down. I've never had any problems, any issues whatsoever. Still on the same set of tyres, still on the same set of brake pads, which I would expect at this mileage. But all in all, it's a pretty reliable package. But I would expect nothing less from Honda. And the reason I'm going slow is because there's a little bit of a tunnel around here. And you know we love a bit of tunnel love. Oh, oh goosebumps. so let's wrap this video up and say uh, in conclusion would i buy this bike again did i make the right decision yep 100 percent i did i absolutely love this bike you might have guessed that otherwise i would have sold it to be honest but it's great it really is good and i'm talking from a road sense i'm not talking off-road i don't know it probably is great everyone raves about it off-road but i'm talking about on road every day commuting london out and about little lanes like this fantastic bike absolutely love it yes it's got its problems it's got its flaws all bikes have that but now i'm over them even the fuel thing i'm kind of over it does annoy me that it doesn't do 200 miles to a tank but we can live with that i kind of make it part of the adventure now so about 150 miles when you're filling up make it somewhere nice have a stretch have a walk round. go and see the old petrol station and enjoy yourself shake hands with people make it an event i don't actually know what i'm talking about i was just rambling then but yeah in conclusion absolutely love the bike I would prefer tubeless tyres, I would prefer a bigger tank, I would prefer cruise control. That is my only big criticism of this bike, is the cruise control. The only one. The rest I can kind of live with now. Even though I did that five things I hate video, 
I'm kind of over most of that now. Now I've lived with it for nearly two years. You kind of get used to it. You kind of get on with each other. I mean, it makes the best of my shortfalls, as in riding. It helps me with all the little gadgets on, i.e. the traction control and the ABS. That helps me out when I get a little bit shit. But on roads like this, on glorious days like this, do you know what? There's probably no better bike or no other bike I'd rather be on. I absolutely love the bike, love the sound. I'm so comfortable on it. It's part of me now. We are one. I talk some rubbish some days, you know. But anyway, I think you get the idea. I think you get the idea that I love this bike. And I'm going to end the video here. So, if you want to leave a comment, go and do that in the comment section below. And if you've got a question, please feel free to ask that as well. Once again, I will try and find out anything I can and try and get back to you on any information on this bike. So that just leaves me to say, don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, to do all those things that you need to do. Don't forget to also hit that notification bell so when the videos come up, you get the drop on everybody else. Ah, it's been another great glorious day out on my beautiful Africa twin. So I shall see you on the next one. Thank you very much for watching. You know I love you all. Stay safe. Fish out. Get all your bags. Get out my house. I don't want your stuff around. I never did you wrong, but you did me wrong. So go ahead, get gone. Get all your bags. Get out my house. I don't want your stuff around. I never did you wrong, but you did me wrong. So go ahead and get gone.